Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Martin GK Show. We're back again, as we are every Monday, 7 p.m. here on Instagram, also up on YouTube as well on Catch Up. It's been filmed for both. So if you missed the show and you want to catch up on YouTube, you can do at a later date in, in coming weeks. I like to kick off each show with um, a weekly roundup of what's been happening in the AB1 family. Um, then I'm going to get on to your questions. I've had some really good ones this week. It's a really packed show. I'm going to feature also um, what's in my glove bag. So it's all going to be about what essentials and what do I put in a glove bag. And we're going to get you guys involved and find out what you put in your glove bag. So, weekend roundup. It's been a very eventful uh, week for the AB1 family, as I said. It started out with midweek action last week for Azmir Begovic, who was the hero for AFC Bournemouth with a win over Crystal Palace in the EFL Cup. The Bosnian international kept his clean sheet in regular time, which took the game to a penalty shootout. Sure, many of you would have seen it. The big man himself took the 11th penalty in the game for Bournemouth, but Wayne Hennessy saved it. However, Wayne's penalty, which he took, he blasted into Rosehead. Um, Asmir decided to finish the tie, however, and he saved the final Palace penalty from Luka Miglovic, and it sent Bournemouth into the next round of the EFL Cup. So congratulations to AFC Bournemouth on that massive win last week. Begovic was also in very good form at the weekend when the championship side, the Cherries, they headed to Middlesbrough's Riverside Stadium. It finished 1-1. In other action around the world, uh, we're looking at Europe. Um, Malmo's Marco Johansson, he played twice last week as well. He was in action midweek in the Europa League. A match at Honvid. Um, Johan Darlene's injury pushed him into the starting 11. He wasn't due to play. He did a great job, though. He kept a clean sheet and he helped the team advance to the next round where they will meet Lokomo Zagreb. In the meantime, Johansson uh, in his side visited Nuremberg in, uh, in a game which was 1-1 and they stayed top of the league. AK, AIK were back in action at the Friends Arena at the weekend. It was a big game in the Stockholm derby. It was a big game. Uh, Budimir Jankovic was in the starting 11 for AIK again. He's had a very good start to the season. Again, he kept a clean sheet and an important 3-0 win over their city rivals, Hammerberg. So it's a brilliant result for them. So well done to our man there. Another clean sheet for the AB1 GK family this week was Chris Maxwell. He captained Blackpool to their first win of the season at Swindon Town, thanks to CJ Hamilton, who scored a brace. Also in action was uh, Ryan Allsop, who had a pretty busy day at, at M, um, Inwood Park. A very experienced Blackburn Rover side there. Um, took advantage of the fact that the visitors went down to 10 men early in the game. And it was a bit of a day for, for Wickham Wanderers. They lost 5-0. However, Ryan made an impressive 11 saves in the game. So it just shows how one-sided the game was. And Ryan kept the score at 5-0. So fair play to him. Must have been a tough weekend though. So that kind of wraps up what's gone on for the, um, for the AB1 family. Next weekend, one to look out for is in Serie B. AB1GK have signed a brand new endorsee over in Italy, Serie B. Daniela Bora will play next weekend, so stay tuned for that. He will be wearing AB1GK gloves. That wraps it up. On to your questions. I've got a few that I want to I want to get into. We've got um, glove sizing chart that's been asked by Steve. He said, you've got a glove sizing chart. I want, want a bit, bit of better guidance on, on glove sizing. What I'd say, Steve, is to jump onto the uh, YouTube channel of AB1GK and there is a full size guide on how to size up goalkeeper gloves. And there's been a lot of questions about sizing on product, actually. So I'm really going to tuck into the next question and, and go into a fair bit more detailed. Um, 
which we will uh, which we will do. Um, Asmir has requested to join in, so that will be fantastic. I'm going to finish off the questions, Asmir, if that's okay, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to flip my camera around and I'm going to get Asmir involved. We'll probably be able to do it on the split as we are, but it'd be great to have um, Asmir on on the show. So thank you, Asmir, for joining me. I'm just going to finish off this final question that I've got here which is really exciting um, and I want to go into a bit of detail about it because John's asked me about sizing on junior gloves. Four, five, six and seven. He said, I really don't know the size and can you give me a little bit of a breakdown on how the fit is on the Icon Junior? So that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's awesome because we've got Asma here and he wants to join us. So I'm pretty excited about that. Here we go. I'm just going to give you the sizing, John, on these um, on these gloves. We're going to we'll start off with a seven and I'm going to work backwards. I've kept them in the packaging because I wanted to kind of give you a better idea on the sizing. And I am going to give you a couple of measurements, John, on this. So in centimetres, we are looking at 11 centimetres across on a size 7. And the palm from the longest finger, the stitched at the top, we're going to go all the way down. And it is 19 centimetres on the size 7, John. So I'm going to get, grab you the 6 now and give you the breakdown on that as well. Everyone's excited that Asma is going to be joining us shortly. It's a nice surprise for me also. Um, there we go. Let's grab the size 6 for you. So we're going to look at the difference now, John. And you're looking at 18. So you're losing a whole centimetre in the length of that glove. And as we work across, I'm going to go again from the seam there to the outside seam. And we are looking at 10 centimetres on that. So just that bit smaller. And it's worth noting that all the others, we're just dropping down, we're dropping down a, a centimetre all the way around the glove. So that just gives you a, a really clear idea on, on how the sizing comes up on those junior gloves. So that should give you a bit of guidance. So just get your son's, son's hands, get some measurements on there and you'll be able to start working around with it. Check out my glove sizing video as well over on the AB1 YouTube channel and now I'm going to find a way to connect with Asmir and, and get him on the show which will be absolutely fantastic. I've got my cameraman here so I'm going to I'm going to get him to invite Asmir in or if Asmir can invite in and then we can uh, we can chat away. To lose the mic. As there, thanks for joining me. How are you doing? I'm good, Martin. How are you? Mate, this is a very nice surprise. Well, do you know what? I... I'm just going to set up now so I can see and uh, we can chat away, so that'd be fantastic. Sounds good, why not? Asmir, talk to me about the penalty shootout last week. How was it? The pen, the pen, the shootout was fine. It, it carried on a little bit longer than I uh, than I wanted it to. Uh, we yeah. Have, um, yeah. Wish we would have sorted that a little bit sooner, but we got there. We got there in the end, thankfully. So it worked out quite well. Yeah. No. Awesome. Your uh, that save at the end was absolutely superb. Um, and the game had to be put to bed, didn't it? There was no question. It had to be. It had to be settled, and and you were the man to do so. Yeah. No. Exactly. I mean, it was. That's what cup ties are all about, right? So you never know. And, you know, we were probably a little bit of an underdog going against the Premier League side. So we, um, yeah, it worked out well for us. The boys, actually, the penalty takers on our team were fantastic. I thought the standard, um, the standard of penalties was really, really high. So it worked out well for us. And we've got a big trip to Man City this Thursday as a reward. So, yeah, the games are coming thick and fast. Yeah. Them. You must be looking forward to the game, Asma, on Thursday. So it's a it's a huge huge game. Um, what's it like going to somewhere like the Etihad to play? Uh, the Etihad's always always a nice place to go. Um, it's always going to be a tough game, as you know. Um, you, a little bit different without crowd. Look, special guest. Yeah, yeah. no. Awesome. How's it been to get back playing? You're back. You're back at Bournemouth now. You're back in the in the side. How's, how's the last two games been? You, you must have built a bit of confidence from that penalty this week. Uh, it obviously you know, played the week as well and, and had a very good game. Yeah, do you know what? It's It's been nice. 
been nice to play. It's been nice. It's been it's been nice to play. Uh, nice to play regularly, of course. Um, and it's been it's been good. Teams have been doing okay. Teams have been doing okay. Go find him. Are you Taylor? Go find him. Must be downstairs. It's bedtime. It's bedtime. So. Definitely. There you go. We'll get some of the guys involved as well. Is it right to get some of the, the viewers in and ask some questions as well, Asmir? Is that okay? Definitely, yeah. Let's get some questions in. Let's get some, um, you know, let's get some questions. It's the whole point of the show. I mean, you've done a great job for the last couple of months um, introducing the show to all our customers and viewers. And I think, you know, it's um, it's been really cool because you're you're doing something interactive with um, with all of our our fans, I guess, people that wear our gloves, uh, they love the product just as much as we do um, for the effort and time that we put into it. So I think the show has been pretty cool. I think it's been pretty unique as well. You don't see many people doing it. Um, and I think it, that's why I kind of wanted to join in and I've been missing out for the last yeah. couple of months. So um, let's talk about it. Let's go get some questions in. I want to get people's thoughts on the David De Gea um, penalty save that was ruled out, the fact that he moved two inches from his line. Uh, yeah, I thought that they was. About I thought that was. Yeah, scary. Nice. So I want to get people's opinion on that. But yeah, fire away with some questions. I mean, if you have any questions, absolutely go. As me, I want to the gloves you're wearing this season. What's what's made Nero this year? You, you've gone from impact and you're now wearing Nero. What what what, what, what kind of wearing Nero? Because I know that you've you've tried all the new and Dietchy gloves. They've gone an absolute storm with the. Guys that tune into this show, and you've gone into to Nero. Talk, talk just a little bit about that, Asmir. Yeah, I mean, no, no particular reason. Listen, it's a new range for us, so I wanted to to represent the new range, uh, the new collection, which is obviously the Odici collection, which came out almost a couple months ago now. Um, and I'm I'm a negative cut guy, so that that's why the Nero uh, fits me quite well. I mean, it's it's more of a personal preference thing it's not the, that any glove is better than worse than the other it's just that i like the negative cuts um you know this week i might go back to the icon it's really it's really you know it's really great to have such a such a range i think that's obviously of high quality and um when you can feel comfortable with any glove so for me it's not that i've changed it's just that i'm wearing different gloves i mean you'll see me wearing um all the different ranges from that, that we have during training obviously matches i'll probably prefer the negative cut just because it's something I've worn for, I don't know, the last 10 years. But, um, you know, I definitely trust the whole range. And I think that's what, that's what I try and do, to obviously show people that you can wear um, wear every single glove at a high level. Yeah. Yeah. It's great to see you wearing all the different models as well. You've even worn the roll finger, haven't you, in, in training as well. And you're trying everything, which is fantastic. It's good because you're constantly giving the guys the feedback that, that are producing the product. And it... And it's all, and it always comes back to negative, hasn't it? Yeah, just because, like I said, it's personal preference. Um, I think when you've worn a certain cut for so long, then obviously that that's what you um, that's what you stick with. Because um, yeah, I don't I don't think negative is better than roll or better than flat or better than um, surround cut or hybrids. Um, it really is just depending on personal preference. People ask all the time, "What do you?" What you recommend? Well, it's I recommend a good quality glove, but the cut is very much in the individual. So that's why it keeps yeah. going back for me to the to the negative cut. No, definitely no. It's it's great. It's great to hear. We're just gonna have a look and see if we've got any people coming. Um, what's a typical day training? It's quite a good question coming out there. What's a typical day's training like in the life of a professional goalkeeper? That's a good one. Yeah, that that's a very they they vary because. Um, you know, earlier in the week, I think when, when, um, when you start the week off, say on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you probably do a little bit more of everything. Um, reflect on the game of the weekend. You know, try and fix a couple of things that you want to work on, that you need to improve on for next week. Um, get some work in, get all your technical work in, uh, get some physical work in done as well. Um, mix it in with the gym work. And then as as the week goes on and you get closer to a game, then you sort of uh, slow things down a little bit so the workload becomes a little bit less and it becomes a little bit more focused on your opponent so you know if you are say facing a team that does a lot of cutbacks then obviously you start working on cutbacks and short range shots um, if you have teams that are more focused on set pieces you start bringing more set pieces and so 
that's how the week the week really varies you know i think you um you very much balance it out at the beginning of the week where you do all your work and get all the most of your work done and then obviously as the week goes on you try and tailor it and to your opponent and the workload comes down nice no, good yeah what do you do in the gym so gym work even i'm quite intrigued as a goalkeeper is there any specific work on in the gym hasn't there yeah it's different now i mean we what do i do i mean i do a lot of core work um a lot of strength work in terms of your your body weight stuff um balance work um work with resistance bands you know i you try and keep things as strong as possible by not wearing the muscles out and, and loading anything too too heavy um when i was younger obviously i probably did a little bit more heavier load because your body was still filling out and you have to get the muscles stronger and your body is growing all the time. Whereas now it's about maintenance, you know, about keeping things as strong as possible, doing some as much prevention work as possible before training sessions and before games so that you're, um, you're ready to go and your body can obviously withhold uh, the strain on it that, that it goes through during season. And um, the times that we're in now, we're obviously playing, training all the time, uh, even more than usual and everything's a little bit more compact. So it's important that you keep, keep your eye on these small little things um, like prevention and making sure your body is maintained as well as possible. No, thank you, Asmin. There's another question coming. Um, a gentleman's asked us, how can you stay focused throughout a season and not drop your form and avoid simple mistakes? Yeah, listen, I think you, Martin, you, you try and focus in on every single game. You, you work as consistently as possible. You try and keep your, keep your routine, um, keep your routine as, as similar as possible and try and not vary too much because one good game, one bad game doesn't mean you can go, you know, into the sky when you have a good game and into the ground when you have a bad game. You try and stay consistent as possible. Um, trust the process and trust into your work. You know, mistakes are going to happen. You're going to do silly things. Um, even on the weekend, one, one of the balls moved, okay, bounces off me and I get away with it with an offside. Um, I get a little bit lucky. That's, that's the way it is. But, can you make sure you focus on an overall performance and give a good um, 90 to 95 percent completion in your passing and all that kind of stuff? So you you want every performance, every training session to be a lot more good than bad. And I think that's how obviously you then become quite consistent in the way you work, and that that will show on your performances on a daily and weekly basis. As me, we're joined by loads of AC Milan fans. There's loads of Milan fans that have joined us since you you've arrived on the show. Asmi, can you just sort of touch on your time in, in Milan and just give the, you know, obviously we've spoken about it personally, but it'd be nice to share some of your experiences with our viewers. Could you just a little touch on it? How was your time over in Italy? Yeah, my, listen, my time was, was amazing. I lived a dream, you know. I, I was able to go and be part of AC Milan for the best part of eight months. And, you know, I, I couldn't have wished for a better time. You know, I came at a bit of a crazy time with the pandemic and everything, the world's kind of gone through the summer, but, you know, I, I, you know, I couldn't have wished for anything better because I was able to, to live a childhood dream to play a phrase of mine and be part of AC Milan is obviously what's, what most people's, most players dream is. And obviously I was very fortunate to do that. I mean, you can see the tradition of the club, obviously the players that we had in the team, the team spirit that we built showed in the results. And then of course you have the fan base, which is maybe um, the best in the world, if not the, one of the best in the world. So um, for me, it was a huge honor, a great experience. And, you know, obviously um, it's, a, it's a time I'll treasure forever. No, it looked, it looked awesome. Like the training facilities there and the, and the training pitches, it was absolutely incredible. Some of the, the, the videos that we saw, uh, the, you, the goalkeepers training, the facility looked incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so it's a world-class club, you know, it's, you couldn't ask for anything better from the San Siro, of course, being the, such an iconic stadium and then and then you go down to Milanello and it's it's a state-of-the-art world-class facility where uh, literally there's no blade of grass out of place and um yeah it's a fantastic place to go to work work to every day and um you know that that's what that's what a club of that level does for you and uh, that's the sort of service they provide as me um I, I want to sort of touch on sort of like the, everything's changed so much it, in football and obviously there's no fans at the moment what's it been like playing with no fans it, it, yeah it was strange I, listen it was it was strange at first i mean we played obviously you know in all our time we all played plenty of games with very little fans whether it's coming through but obviously the professional level is not something you're used to um so it took a it took a couple of games to get get your bearings and kind of get a feel for that whole atmosphere 
but then um but then you get used to it and uh, it's funny enough we had a thousand fans at the game on on saturday and it felt like ten thousand because it was it was different to what we've done for the last three four months and um mm. it felt really nice to have the fans back and have a little bit of atmosphere and um um everything that came with that so you know I'm, I'm pretty sure that the world will take you know steps to to get fans back you see it at some at the old sporting events now during during uh during all all, all around the world whether it's the nfl whether it's um in football and different different sporting events so hopefully we keep going in the right direction and get through this thing no, Jeff, I've got a couple of more questions coming. I'm going to ask you. What's your height, Asmir? So, a gentleman's asked me, what is what's I'm, your uh, height? I'm two, two metres tall. So I think that's about six foot six, six foot seven now. Yeah. Certainly very tall. Um, what is, I've also had, what's inspired you to become a goalkeeper? Yeah, I mean, for those people who don't know, listen, I um, I became a goalkeeper because it's just sort of something that was in my family. My, my dad used to be a professional in the former Yugoslavia. My grandfather used to be in the game. So, you know, from the time, from the moment I was born, I put the gloves on and um, there was no plan B for me. So thankfully, plan A and option one worked and, um, you know, I couldn't be happier. We've got so many different questions coming in. It's amazing you join us and there's people from all over the world joining us. Asmi, keep those quality products coming is, an, is, an, is another nice question, another nice comment. I've also had another one in that said, my parents were so happy with the pricing of the, the AB1 gloves. My brother and I go through gloves quick and it, not great having to pay hundreds of pounds for gloves each time. So thank you. So, so what you're doing in producing these wonderful goalkeeper products at a good price is just showing that everybody is really appreciating it, Asmir. Well, listen, Martin, I mean, that's what, that's what we try and do. I think it's a myth that when people say, oh, I need a pair of gloves, it's going to last me, uh, last me forever. There, there is no such thing. You know, we, we really pride ourselves in doing, doing a great product and making great products and, of course, then trying to be as competitive and as price friendly as we can. You know, we had a very, very simple mission, and uh, obviously that mission now is, has come to fruition. And I think people are very much, um, you know, very much taking that on board, which is obviously fantastic for us. And it's something we want to continue to do because every range that we do, I think, is going to be better and better. I think the fact that people love it so much is obviously giving us a lot more motivation to continue to do what we do. And um, you know, it's something that we. Um, yeah, we really take a lot of pride in and and the team really loves to do. So we're going to keep it going as much as and as long as we can. That's another nice comment. And AB1 products are superior and the best goalie products on the market. So another lovely, lovely comment. So thank you for that. I'm just going to see if there's any other questions coming in. There's so many different bits coming in. Thank you for everything you did at Stoke. You were a true legend. Uh, good potters. Um, Stoke fans, what, yeah. Great people up there. <laughs> And um, what are the difficulties in becoming a a top goalkeeper? Is it is it difficult to make it to the top of the game? I, I say this to a lot of people. Yeah, I think. Well, listen, to to be uh, to be a high level goalkeeper, obviously, it's um, takes a lot of dedication, takes a lot of pro, you know perseverance it's not it's not easy uh go the goalkeeping position is is the you know the biggest pressurized um or the highest pressurized position on the field i think so it takes a lot of time takes a level of maturity um you know people mature a little bit later in life of course and that's why goalkeepers probably develop a little bit later so uh it takes a lot of hard work dedication sacrifice all of the above um but ultimately what it takes is a, is a dream and something you want to follow because yeah i i started the same as everybody i started from nothing and i had um i had a dream i had a vision something i wanted to achieve in my life and um, that's what obviously kept driving me through all the good and bad times asmir how old were you when you were called up for the national side uh, this gentleman's which, asking questions which one which one um yes he was asking how old were you when you, when you were yeah called up for the national side and how different is it how different is it playing for the national team compared to your club side um, I take it if that that was from when I was obviously called up for Bosnia. Um, so I was I was twenty twenty two when I was first called up. Um, I've been part of the national team for a good good eleven years or so, and um, hopefully I can keep that going for a while. But listen, it's it's a special feeling. Uh, it's something you really can't can't describe. Um, 
because it's it's a feeling that yeah that that's obviously that runs deep and it's not just me it goes to my family and everybody you represent and you know it's quite a dark uh, it's quite a deep feeling that like i said goes throughout the whole family so for me it was um it was a special feeling it's obviously a special feeling every time i'm part of that team every time i i can step foot on the on the pitch to represent my country it's pretty awesome so yeah it's it's a it's the pinnacle of the game and something um you know obviously very privileged to be a part of you were captain uh, a couple of weeks ago as well weren't you sure sure yeah you know that that's obviously even a bigger honor um i was able to do that now a handful of times and you know it, it's been great um but ultimately at the same time it's a collective thing um we we need good players good leaders in any team and uh, it's about the team success um first and foremost as well, ben thomas has joined us he joins me uh, most weeks on the show he says as near um are there any insights on young up-and-coming goalkeepers that you've come across that you will be a believed to be a big talent in the future oh good good question um you know, I think there there are some very very talented goalkeepers um, around. I mean, it depends how how young you want to go. Um, you know, we have um, at Bournemouth or going coming through. Your Aaron Ramsdale has obviously done some great things and gone on to Sheffield United. Uh, Mark Travers is is coming through. He's he's a talented boy. Um, and then you have the likes of you know Adnan Kanarich, who is who's in the Bosnian setup, and he's. He's just turned 20 and he's playing in the top Slovakian league. And that's that's a pretty impressive thing. So uh, you have some really good, talented kids coming through. I mean, maybe kids that um, or people that don't, people don't quite know and haven't heard the name up so as much um, so far. But, you know, they'll be they'll be at the highest level in no time, I'm sure. No, definitely. Um, there's a few Chelsea fans joined us as well. You had a great time at Chelsea, didn't you, as well, to be fair. Um, winning the Premier League there as well. Um, Asmir, before you go, um, I was going to do a little showcase on, that, on the brand new glove bag we've got, yeah. which is not on me now. And I was talking about all the essentials. I wanted to, to show off my essentials that would go into a glove bag. It might be it'd be good to get you involved, actually, because I, I was kind of going through it today and, and thinking, I wonder, wonder what Asmir has in his glove bag. And now I've got a great opportunity to ask you the question. Do you have a glove bag? Do, do you take a glove bag? You take one of these glove bags to try yeah. Yeah, I use that exact um, glove bag, um, you know, which which obviously some will have different ranges coming through. So keep keep your eye on the products coming out. Um, but yeah, essentials for me: two pairs of gloves. You know, one sort of for the warm up, one for the game, and then the other one becomes the. the I've got in mind two, two pairs of gloves. Two pairs Pair of gloves. gloves. Yeah, yeah. Two pairs. Then I you then I awesome. give your wash bag stuff. You know, you have your wash bag. Yeah, then you have your tape and shin pads, and that's about it, really. Thankfully, yeah, the kit man takes their boots, so you don't have to fit your boots in there. You don't. You say you don't put your boots in there. No, I don't. Thankfully, the kit man takes those, so I only put my gloves and bits and pieces in there. Attach the little uh, the key ring as well on the sides of the Glasgow key cool, ring. Yeah. So no, it's a pretty cool key ring. Yeah, pretty yeah. cool one. But I was going to do some photos in the next couple of days, just put. Well, we'll get everyone involved. What does everyone put in their kit bag, in their glove bag? So it'd be quite cool to get people involved and, and, and yeah. see, see what well, others are doing. I think, I think it's awesome, Martin. I mean, you do these videos, you know, you do your glove care videos, uh, the size guides. You know, we get these questions asked a lot. And, you know, make sure you you guys head to our social media pages. You head to our YouTube page because you can find a lot of this information there, you know, and um, this kind of stuff's pretty cool. I think um, the fact that you you go through these details and show people, I hope people appreciate it, and I think um, it goes a long way. Just trying to get that extra mile, aren't we? Just to really give that, like you said, that attention to detail like no other, and just really going to depth of product because it's it's just nice for me to put my hands in something and be able to sort of relay it to somebody that, that it's not easy to to go out and find goalkeeper gloves anymore, and a lot of buying is done online, isn't it? So it's perfect way to interact. Well, no, I, I honestly think like I, I, I'm the same. Look, I'm, you know, I have two kids. My, my brother, my younger brother was a goalkeeper. Um, you know, goalkeepers in our family. So I understand. I really like that. That's the one thing I really appreciate is the cost. You know, like it's not easy to, to make a living. It's not easy for your kid to be a goalkeeper. And, and we want to encourage kids to be goalkeepers. But, you know, every parent or anyone who like, oh, my son or my daughter, 
wants to be a goalkeeper. You not only have to buy boots and shin pads, you then have to buy the gloves, whereas... Taylor doesn't want to film a TikTok with me. Okay, well, you can go do TikToks in a minute. Um, <laughs> so there, um, we understand that like it's, it's an extra cost, right? So it's not only expensive to be doing boots and everything else, and then you got to put gloves on top of that. So that actually discourages so many kids from being goalkeeper alone, just, just the cost. So we're really trying to be as connected to the public. We're trying to be as connected to to all our customers as we can. And I think that's what we uh, really try and do. And not only that, but obviously by giving a lot more of this information to everyone to make sure they, they buy the right product, to buy the best possible product and have as much information before they make the purchases. It's key for us. No, I agree. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's a nice surprise that you've come on. Man, it's a pleasure. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. It was a